Um, you're saying double B or B high yields. And I assume that there's yeah. sort of a, a fine line here. You want to go to the riskier part as much as you can tolerate because the yields will be higher. But at the same time, you don't want to play um, in, in, in bonds that have any sort of risk of not being able to service their debt <laughs> in, in a recessionary oh. environment. I, I think I think the important point, um, Melissa, here, and it's great to be with you, uh, and uh, I always enjoy hanging out with you, Melissa. I just wanted to point out what we're really saying is that the equity of a company is always the most dangerous part of the capital structure. That's the first loss piece. So what we're saying here is that why not go to the debt of these companies? A lot of them are you know, in, in much higher yield positions than they were a year ago because rates are higher and spreads are wider. Take a more senior position in the company and get something that looks very similar to equity-like returns, high single digits to low double digits, uh, and possible capital gains if, if rates or spreads come in. So I think that's really the story, and it's a fundamentally different position for those higher yielding bonds. And I would say this is structured credit, muni credit, corporate credit. I'm not being so particular that I'm saying you have to go to the company level, but I think there's just a lot of beaten up <clears throat> stories in credit uh, after last year. After all, this was one of the worst years uh, in decades, maybe even centuries, depending on how you look at it, for bonds. And it was definitely not in equities. We get 15 to 20% pullbacks all the time. Mm -hmm. um, are there val so do you think that there are values in this part in the double B sort of B uh, high yield section? I, I, I guess what the important thing is, and I think a lot of your guests earlier today were saying the same thing. I really just don't see a lot of movement in the equity. Yeah. I think this is a year where we're just going to bounce around and torture people, go up to 4,200, go down to 3,700, maybe 4,300. You know, the Fed's going to get mean and nasty up to 4,300. They're going to sound nicer at 3,700, but not too nice. And it's just going to it's going to be a chop fest and it's going to hurt. And you can sell vol in equities. That's probably not a terrible strategy either. But why play around in that when you've got uh, the yields that you have for a market that if it's largely unchanged is going to pay you a coupon of 10%. And, and I just don't see the, the reason to take equity risk for me Yeah, is I, if you have equity-like returns and you just don't have a great story for big, like 20% returns in broad indices this year. Right. You make, you make the point that, that the SPOOs, the S&P, is just going to torture us, um, you know, yeah. as the Fed is doing what it's, what it's doing. And, you know, what we've seen, interestingly, is, is volatility overall, the VIX, has remained under 20. I mean, it's, it's just... It's, it's gobsmacking almost how, how low volatility is. And so I'm wondering what you make of that as any sort of a read um, and, and whether or not there are better you know, measures of volatility. Because what we're seeing is volatility in, in bonds, volatility in uh, currencies, much higher than in equities. Yeah. No, I, I think there have been a lot of volatility selling strategies. That was our strategy last yeah. year. We were covered call sellers all mm -hmm. year. We did it a couple times. And you know, manage to, you know, recommend to our clients a, a strategy that outperformed S&Ps pretty nicely. But I, I think, you know, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. If we were here a year ago or at the beginning of 2022, ball was pretty low back then. If you were selling the at the money spot calls in S&Ps, you were basically getting 7%. Today, if you're selling the 4,000 calls, I think you're getting close to nine or nine and a half percent. So mm -hmm. you're getting a much bigger number than you were when we were back up at the highs, 4,700, 4,600. But yes, coming from this year of high volatility, it seems low, but it's been a lot lower. And it was a lot lower a, a little more than a year ago, a year and a couple of weeks ago. And then obviously the, the year started to tumble pretty quickly in 2022. Right. David, we got to go, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, I, I do want one last question. Within sure. double BB, a high yield, are there certain sectors that you think are positioned better? I, I think what you, you have to do is you have to spend time in the debt markets with qualified people that know what they're doing. That's what we do at Jefferies. with our bread and butter. We're a high yield shop and have been for many, many years. I think you go in, you look at names, you look at stories, and you add and subtract where you see people who have, one, done their debt homework and not... Uh, done too much to be short term, have long term or termed out their debt. And you look at businesses that really have sort of done reasonably well through right. this period, but are just struggling to get the, the financing or the leverage that they that they need. And that's why they're in the double B and B category. So I, I think I think there's a lot of stories. I think you just go straight to J&K and HYG. You can probably add in some AAA CLOs. There's products there. There's lots of places that you can um, get high single digit low double-digit yields, even in the ETF space, and then add some names on top of that. 
Um, it's a little trickier. It's not as easy sure. as pressing buttons on your uh, on your accounts, uh, your online accounts. But you know, the, the bond world, I think, is where a lot of the opportunity comes. David, great speaking with you. Thanks, David Zervos, Jeff Fries.